Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to talk about vector spaces and subspaces. Specifically in this video we are going to first define what a vector space is, and then we're going to define what a subspace is, and then we're going to learn how to tell if we take a subset whether that subset is a subspace. So we'll start off with our first definition. What is a vector space? A vector space is when we take a set of objects, we'll call that set of objects V, and we'll define some sort of addition and scalar multiplication on this set of objects. And if this set, along with these operations, satisfies a series of properties, then we will call that set a vector space. And then I, instead of saying the set of objects V, I will be able to call it the vector space V. So what are these properties that must be satisfied? Well, here is a list of all 10 of them. So once again, if we have this set of stuff, a set of vectors, hopefully, um, and we define what we mean by addition of scalar multiplication, if all these properties are satisfied, then we call it a vector space. So what are these properties? Well, the first one says u plus v belongs to the set v. We will call this the closure property, the closure property of vector addition. And if this property holds, we say that that is closed under addition. Now, what does this really mean, being closed under addition? It means if I add two vectors in the space, I will get another vector that is in the space. I can't add my way out of this set of vectors. So that's the first one. The next two properties should look somewhat familiar. The next one is just the commutative property of addition, of vector addition. The one after that is just the associative property of vector addition. Now, the next one says there must exist, so this backwards E means there exists, some zero vector which we may have to specifically define depending on our set, but there exists some magical vector, which we're going to call zero, where I take any vector and I add zero, and I just stick with my original vector. So we call this the additive identity. So there must exist an additive identity. The next one says there must exist an additive inverse. So there must exist some vector, which we're going to denote by minus the u vector, such that when I take u plus this special vector, minus u vector, we get back that additive identity. So this says there must exist an additive inverse. That's what this property is really called. And so together, those first five really tell us all the properties that are associated with vector addition. So you can think of this first group as the properties of addition. And the next five are going to be our properties of scalar multiplication. And they look very similar to our properties for addition. This first one says if you take any vector v or u and you multiply it by some number c, that the result will be another element of that set of objects. It will be in v. In other words, I can't multiply myself out of my vector space. The next two are essentially distributive properties of scalar multiplication followed by an associative property of scalar multiplication. And then we have this last one. It says if I multiply my vectors by one, I still get that same vector. This is similar to our property number four when we're adding zero. So this is also an identity property. This is the multiplicative identity property or the identity property of scalar multiplication. All right, so now we've gone through and explained what each one of these means. Let's kind of see it in action. So let's look at a specific set of objects. We're going to look at the set of all lists of three numbers. Let me some shorthand here. And that collection of lists of three numbers can be thought of as R3. Now we have already looked at R3 and talked about it being a vector space. And so now we want to justify that. Is R3 really a vector space? So first we have to define what the elements are. We said it's a list of all three numbers. So in other words, if I want to talk about some vector in my vector space, here would be an example, u1, u2, u3, where u1, u2, and u3 are any real numbers. And then to define my vector space, I need to define what I mean by vector addition. I need to define what I mean by scalar multiplication. In this case, we're going to define those operations in the standard way the way we've seen before. So if this is u and this is v, then u plus v is defined to be, this is how we are defining it, as the sum of the components. 
and you should note that I can make up my own definitions for vector addition and define a new space. But to show that that is a vector space, I would have to show that the new definition of addition also satisfy these properties. I also want to define scalar multiplication, and I will do that in the normal way by taking each of the components and multiplying them by the scalar value. So these are just my standard definitions for vector addition and vector and multi scalar multiplication in R3. Now, does it satisfy these properties? Well, we look at the first one. Is this closed under vector addition? Well, here's what I got when I added these two vectors. And because u1 plus v1 is a real number, and u2 plus v2 is a real number, and u3 plus v3 is a real number, the result will be a list of three numbers. So no matter which two vectors I take in R3, when I add them together, I get another vector in R3. So it is closed under vector addition. Now, some of the other properties we've already seen before. We've already talked about the fact that vector addition is commutative, that it's associative. We've already looked at those things. Now, what about the zero vector? Do we have a zero vector? Well, sure, I can define the zero vector just to be the vector whose components are all zero. And then if I looked at u plus my zero vector, I would just get u. So we do have an additive identity. What about an additive inverse? Well, I can really look at the vector negative 1, as in that scalar, times the vector u. And this would give me the vector negative u1, negative u2, negative u3. And if I take that value and I add it to the vector u, I will get to that 0 vector. So we do have an inverse for every vector in R3. So I've gone through the addition properties. What about the scalar multiplication properties? If I take any vector u and I multiply it by a scalar c, well, we've seen the result. It's over here. And we can see that no matter what u1, u2, and u3 are, multiplying them by c will still give me just more real numbers. And so I will once again be left with a list of three real numbers. So yes, we are closed under scalar multiplication. And once again, the next few properties, the distributive properties and the associative property we have talked about when we define scalar multiplication in R3. And the last one, the scalar 1 times u will get me to u. So we can also confirm that that one is true. So it satisfies all 10 of these properties. And so we can declare R3 to be a vector space. And in fact, we can further conclude, if you wanted to look in a little more deeply, that R4 is a vector space, R5, Rn for any value of n is also a vector space. So those ones we worked with before, what about something a little more creative? Let V be the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less. Define addition and scalar multiplication in the usual way for adding polynomials and multiplying them by scalars. Is this a vector space? What would a vector look like in this vector space? Well, a vector might look like some u1 times x squared, some u2 times x plus u3 as a constant for any u1, u2, and u3 in the real numbers. So this would be one vector in this space, hopefully, if we show it's a vector space. I can look at another vector v. It would be v1 times x squared plus v2 times x plus v3. And so now the question is, if I add any two vectors, is that also a polynomial of degree 2 or less? Well, how do I define vector addition in this space? Well, I would define it by adding the coefficients of the x terms. So u plus v would be, and we know how to add polynomials together, so we can see this would be a result here. So if I look at this result, I just have a real number times x squared, a real number times x, and some real number. And so I do have another second degree polynomial or less. So yes, it is closed under vector addition. Check. And I would really encourage you to go through the rest of these properties and see if you can justify the results. There's only a couple I'm going to highlight. One, is there a Additive identity, is there, and I should rewrite this, once again, another error in the notes here, this should be, does there exist a zero vector such that u plus zero is equal to u? And is that true? Well, if I look at this polynomial, zero x squared plus zero times x plus zero, if I take that and add it to any other polynomial, I will get that original polynomial. So yes, there is a zero vector. And once again, I can go through the rest of these properties and just verify. And we can show that the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less 
really is a vector space. Now what about an example that would not be a vector space? Well, what if I got rid of this last piece here? What if I just look at the set of all polynomials of degree 2, but not or less? Let's just remove or less. So now we're just looking at the second degree polynomials. So, for example, 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 is a second degree polynomial. But 3x minus 2 is a first degree polynomial. And so now that we're not talking about degree of less than 2, this would not be a second degree polynomial. So, what does that tell me? If I took a vector u equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 8, some kind of random um, vector. Now look at some other vector v equal to negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 1, for instance, also seemingly random. But if I added those two vectors together, I would get 0x squared, so that piece would kind of disappear here. I would just get 2x plus 9. But this is a first degree polynomial. So in this case, I've taken two vectors that are second degree polynomials. I've added them together, and I've gotten a first degree polynomial, something that's outside of my space. So in this case, this would not be a vector space. Now, of course, there are ways that we could allow this to be a vector space if we just allowed this to be 0x squared and still call this a second degree polynomial. But all those definitions would have to be set at the beginning. So the way we defined it, this would not be a vector space. So now that we've talked about vector spaces, what is a subspace? Well, a subspace is just a subset of vectors from a vector space, V, that itself is also a vector space. So let's try to visualize this a little bit. We have some sort of space of stuff. We're going to call this space V. And we can show that this is a vector space. That's what we're given when we start with. Now the subspace would be some little sub-collection of these vectors. So it's not all of the vectors in V. We'll call this one h, for instance. And if we can show that h itself, that set with the definition of addition and scalar multiplication, is also a vector space, then h should be called a subspace. So how would we do this? Well, we would have to show that h, with the operation, satisfies all 10 of those properties. But we can actually shortcut that a little bit. Because if I looked at two elements in h, call this one u, call this one v, a lot of those properties are already taken care of because u and v are also in v. So do, I don't have to check if u plus v equals v plus u. Because the fact that v is a vector space already guarantees that this property holds. So in other words, in general, I might have to show all 10 properties. But because I'm already inside of a larger vector space, a lot of those properties I already can verify for free. So what that means is, if we have a vector space and we look at a subset h of that vector space, to show that it's a subspace, we only have to check a few of the properties. So which properties do we have to check? These three. Given a vector space v, a subset h of v is a subspace if the following three properties hold. The zero vector is in the subset. The subset is closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication. Let's quickly look back at our visualization. So we already know that because u and v are in the vector space v, that it's going to be commutative under addition and associative property under addition is going to hold. But what we don't know is, one, if the zero vector is in the space, because I could have zero here. And if zero isn't in h, then zero, and then h by itself could not be a vector space. So that's why the, that's one of the properties we have to check to make sure the zero vector is in there. Also, because u and v are in the vector space v, I know that if I add u and v, I must get some other vector in v. But that doesn't mean I must get another vector in h. So for h to be a vector space, not only does u and v have to be closed on in v, but also in h. So when I add these two together, I have to stay somewhere in h still. So that's why we have to check these three properties. So let's do an example. Let h be the set of all vectors in R3 that lie in the x, y plane and define addition and scalar multiplication in the usual way for adding vectors in R3. Is H a subspace? Well, to show it's a subspace, I have to verify those three properties. So first, I want to talk about the subset. How can I describe this subset? H 
is really just the set of all vectors that look like this, x1, x2, and 0 for any x1 and x2 that are real numbers, that belong to the set of all real numbers. The fact that it's in the xy plane really just means that its z component is 0, and the 0 in that third component. So, to show this is subspace, I have to first say, is the 0 vector in H? That would be my first question. And that means, is the vector 0, 0, 0 in H? And yes, yes it is, because I see that third component is 0, so it really is in my subset. Then, is H closed under addition? That would be my second question. So if I take some x1, x2, 0 vector, some random vector in H, and I add it to any other vector, y1, y2, 0 in H, the result would look like x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, and 0. 0 plus 0, which is 0. So yes, this is in H. So it is closed under addition. Now, is H closed? under scalar multiplication. Once again, let's, let's test. We'll take some constant times some x1, x2, 0. The result will be c times x1, c times x2, and c times 0, which is 0. So if I take any element of h and multiply it by some constant, I am left with a element in h still. So I've shown that those three properties hold. So I can say the subset h is actually a subspace h. All right, so in this video, we've defined what a vector space is, we've defined what a subspace is, and now we've shown how to look at a subset of a, of a vector space and determine whether it's really subspace. And that concludes this video. Thank you.